Well, hello, friends. It is Wednesday, and that means that it's time for our Summer Kids Club. This is our second week of Summer Kids Club. How are you doing with summer so far? It is hot out there. I hope you're staying cool and drinking lots and lots of water. Well, for this week, we come to our first of three weeks in the book of Esther. Now, Esther lived in the time when God's people were ruled over by the king of Persia. And it was a time when no one had really heard God's voice. No one had seen God in quite a long time. And, and people wondered, with this king ruling over them and, and all of these hard things happening to God's people, where was God? How do we live as God's people in hard or sad or painful times? The book of Esther is looking at some of those questions. And today, well, you'll get to meet Esther and maybe learn a little bit about what it was like to live in that kingdom when the king of Persia ruled over so many countries. Well, before we go too much farther today, why don't we dive into today's story from the book of Esther. Many years ago, in the land of Persia, there ruled a powerful king. His name was King Xerxes. And in the third year of his reign, King Xerxes had a magnificent feast for all of his officials and servants, showing all the riches, all the wealth, and all of the beautiful things about his kingdom. I even wore my jeweled shirt to go along with this story. And if you look at this gold, I got this when we conquered Egypt. Uh-huh. And then look at this beautiful vase. I got that from Macedonia. Did I tell you I own them too? And uh, um, did you try the dip? Sorry. Did you try the dip? It came with, it's got figs in it that were brought here from Africa by slaves. And this feast of showing off his treasures and the things he's acquired and people he's ruled over lasted 180 days. That's a long time. Can you imagine a party that's 180 days long? That's six months. So six months ago, it was Christmas. Whew, long time. 180 days? That isn't nearly long enough to show you everything that I own. And then after that, he had another feast. This one was seven days and he had it in the garden court at his palace. What else do I own? Um, what else do I have that's beautiful? Oh, oh, my wife. Yes, servants, go find my wife. Tell her to put her crown on. Make herself look beautiful. Whatever she's doing, that's not important. I just want to show how much beautiful she is to all the people and, and, and how I own, I mean, how I'm married to her. Queen Vashti had been holding a different royal feast for all of the women who lived in the royal palace when the royal message arrived. What? Put on my royal crown so that the king's officials and all the people of Persia can stare at me like, like some sort of trophy? Tell the king I refuse to come. The servants delivered the news to the king. She wasn't coming. I can't believe this. This woman has disobeyed me. A woman has disobeyed the king. Nobody can disobey the king. Go fetch my wise men. Let's figure out what to do to get her what she deserves. The king's wise men came. And when he told them what happened, they agreed with him. They gave him advice on how to deal with her, and he agreed. Yes, that is what we'll do. She is no longer allowed in my presence. She is no longer queen of Persia. Kick her out, make it embarrassing too. And find me a new queen, one that'll do everything that I tell her, do everything that I say, and make sure she's pretty. I mean, like, really pretty. That's all. And so Vashti, no longer queen, was sent away in disgrace. Hey, hey, look over there. Isn't that Vashti? Oh, didn't she used to be the queen? Oh, how embarrassing, right? Oh, oh, ew, she's looking this way. Quick, quick, pretend we don't see her. <laughs> oh. And before long, the king's servants began to search for a new queen, a beautiful young maiden to take the place of Queen Vashti. Word was sent out to all the households to present all the young women so that the most beautiful could be found and sent to the king. 
Now in those days, the Jewish people had been conquered, captured, and many lived in the land of Persia, ruled over by this people, unable to worship God in the old ways at the temple, unable to gather for their holy festivals. In fact, the Jewish people were often treated badly in this land. They were looked down on for ways that they were different. And so the king's decree came to the home of Mordecai, where he lived with his cousin Esther. Esther was an orphan, and Mordecai had raised her as if she was his own daughter. Esther, uh, I've learned that the king is looking for a young woman to be the new queen, now that Queen Vashti is, well, gone. So you must go with all the other young women to the palace. The, the palace? Me? It's the king's order. Oh, but when you go, you must not reveal to anyone about your family or who your people are. You know things aren't always safe for God's people in this land. I understand, cousin. I will do as you say. So Esther came in front of the servants in charge of finding the most beautiful women. And they liked her. She found herself in a group of the most beautiful women in the kingdom. But before they could be brought before the king for him to choose his wife, they had to complete 12 months of preparation, training, special diets, and beauty treatments. Wait, 12 months? Longest makeover ever. You could say that. So months went by. Her cousin Mordecai checked on her every day, walking the courtyard to make sure that she was okay. Esther, how are you? Are you well? I'm well. You wouldn't believe what they have us doing. Six months of oils and myrrh. Six months of perfumes and cosmetics. No, no, I, I believe it. I can smell you from here. Ha ha. But thanks for checking on me and coming to the gates every day. Oh, of course, my Esther. What is family for? Oh, oh, but you haven't told them. I haven't told anyone about my family or my people, cousin. Just as you said. Good. Good. Now, now go. I'll be here at the gate again tomorrow. Finally, the 12 months of preparation were completed, and the women were brought before King Xerxes. Ah, oh, it's so hard being king. I mean, none of these choices are right. I mean, she's too tall. She's too short. She's too freckly. Her nose just, just isn't working for me. And that one, she smiles too much. And the one, she smiles too little. I am called Esther, your majesty. Hmm. This one's the best so far. Very pretty. Put a crown on her head. Yes, yes. Now, it, it's been a while. She's the one. Let's have a feast. We haven't had a feast in a while. Put the slaves and servants back to work. We have a new queen to show off. I mean, to, to, yeah. And so Esther became Queen Esther. Well, congratulations, your royal majesty. Come on, cousin Mordecai. That's just weird. Still, uh, be careful and tell no one about your family or, or that you're one of our people. I want you to be safe. Oh, and, and speaking of being safe, as I've been here at the gate waiting to meet you, I, I've overheard some of the king's officers talking. Uh, I think they're plotting to kill the king. Oh, dear. Why can't this world just be safe and peaceful? I will warn the king. And she did, and the plot was foiled. And so it was that King Xerxes ruled over Persia with his queen, Esther. But it wasn't long before another plot began to unfold. One that could bring great danger to all of God's people in Persia. But for that, you'll have to wait till next week. Well, what do you think of this week's story, friends? Kind of a cliffhanger, isn't it? I wonder what will happen. It feels a bit like a fairy tale, doesn't it? Like like Cinderella or something. This, this young woman is chosen by the king to be the new queen. But if you're paying attention, there are a lot of hard things happening in this story. Esther grew up without her parents, and while she had her cousin Mordecai to take care of her, that had to be a painful thing to grow up as an orphan. She lived as one of a people who are treated so badly that her cousin thinks it's not safe for anyone to even know that she is one of God's people. It's a dangerous time. 
And if you look what happened to the queen, the first queen, who got kicked out of the palace just for not wanting to be treated like a trophy, can you imagine, even though Esther was now the queen, do you think she felt perfectly safe? Do you think she felt more secure? I'm not so sure. We live in a world still today where there are hard things that happen to us all the time. Well, we know about this virus that's going around with lots of people getting sick. People have had to change their jobs or even lose their jobs sometimes. We have loved ones that get sick. Some of us in the kids club are sad right now because you've lost people that you love even this week. This is a hard world sometimes. And sometimes when we're sad and when we're angry, it can feel like God's not there. And I think it's important for us to know that that's okay. That it's okay for us to ask that question like Esther did. Why can't the world just be safe and peaceful? It's okay to be sad, to be angry, to be scared, to be confused, to be upset. And we can bring those feelings to God. Because even when we can't see God there, even when we can't hear God there, God is there and is ready for us to bring everything we're feeling to God's feet. So this week's activities all center around hard times, the things that are tough and painful. Even today's craft focuses on that a bit. And I think you might enjoy it. Maybe Jade will help me show you how to do it. This week in your package, you should have received a letter that tells you all about this week's activities, as well as the different coloring pages and activity sheets that go along with our story as well. For this week's main craft, you'll receive a half sheet of cardstock paper, kind of white and speckly, and a bunch of colored strips. You also should have a glue stick. Now, if you've got more than one person with projects in your family getting this, you'll have to share the glue stick. We only sent every address one glue stick. In today's story about Esther, we learned that there was a lot of things that were hard in Esther's world. Today's project centers on you thinking about some of the things that are hard in your world. Take the colored paper and a pencil and either write or draw on some of the colored strips some things that are hard in the world. Take your time and maybe on each different color, do something else. What are things that make you sad? What are things that make you angry? What are things you wish could be fixed in the world? And then either write the word or draw a picture or make a symbol of that thing, maybe a different one on each colored piece of paper. Queen Esther might have done a drawing about how her people, the Jewish people, were treated in Persia. Or maybe she would have written something about the murder plot against her husband, King Xerxes. What are you going to write? What are you going to draw? Once you feel like you're out of things to color, it's okay if you don't use all the strips. Go ahead and rip the ones you did, and the other ones if you want, into pieces. And while you're doing this, you can even pray a bit and say, God, would you take these things away from the world? It's okay if it even feels a little bit good to take out some of your frustration or sadness on the things that you wrote or draw as you ask God to take these things out of our world. Are you close? No, I just really like ripping it. Once you've got it ripped into tiny pieces, now comes the beautiful part of this project. You can take all the tiny pieces of color that you've ripped apart, all these things that you long for God to take away in our world, and make something beautiful. You have your glue stick. Use it to glue tiny pieces of colored paper to the cardstock. Now you might turn this into a picture, or maybe a pattern or design, or maybe you'll just arrange the colors in a way that you think is beautiful, but you're gonna take these ripped up hard things in our world and turn it into something beautiful. What design will you make? You probably shouldn't try to cover all of the white spaces because it's very hard and your hands will be very, very sticky. <laughs>
here's an activity that you can do as a family discussion. In fact, this is a great thing to do at the dinner table while you eat together, or maybe while you're relaxing together to beat out of the sun, or even just before bed. It's an activity called a rose and a thorn. Everybody go around and take a turn sharing one beautiful part of your day that was joyful and life-giving and happy, the rose, and one painful part of the day that was hard, that was hurtful, one part that you did not enjoy, the thorn. It's a great way to practice listening to each other, caring for each other, and paying attention to the good things and the hard things in our lives. Now, Hope has another activity that you can do on your own. Here's an activity for you to do this week. God calls us to be the light in the world. And part of that is noticing when things aren't the way they should be and praying to God to ask how we can be a part in making those things right. First, take a sheet of paper and draw a line down the center. On one side of it, draw what is wrong in your world or the whole world. I'm going to write something we all know about right now, COVID. Then on the right side, we're gonna write what it would look like if that wrong was made right. And I'm gonna put that all the kids get to go back to school in the fall. So now that I've shared mine with you, how about you complete the activity and share yours with someone that you love? Here's an activity that you can do by yourself or with a friend. Sometimes things can happen in life that can make you sad or scared or worried. Today, we're going to find a worry stone. So go for a walk and look for a stone that catches your eye. Take the stone and put it in your pocket. Whenever you're sad or scared or worried, you can take out the stone and rub it. And remember that you can bring all of these things to God. Here's an activity that you can do with your whole family. All right, guys, for tonight's game, we are playing It Could Be Worse. It Could so Be Worse. I'm going to say something that's bad, like, oh, I woke up this morning and I was late. And Maddie's going to say, It Could Be Worse. You could have missed breakfast. Oh, man. And then Kimmy would say, it could be worse for me if you don't get in the pool. Oh, it could be worse if I didn't get in the pool when it's hot out, right? It could be worse. I found a snake in the garage. It could be worse. It could be a snake in your boot. Ho, ho, ho. What about you, Kimmy? It could be worse. Up, up, you had a mom and you shoe. A mom in your shoe? <laughs> a mom in your shoe. It could be worse. It could be raining outside. It could be worse. It could be snowing outside. Oh, Kimmy? It could be worse if you have a, a, a flip-flop in your shoe. A flip-flop is <laughs> a shoe and it's snowing outside? It could be worse. You could be grounded. It could be worse. You could, uh, it could have a huge storm outside. Ooh. It's something worse than a storm outside. <laughs> like what? What's worse, What's than, a worse storm? than a storm outside? The clouds. There could be clouds. Yeah. Yeah. It could be worse. You could forget or put your shirt on backwards. It could be worse. You could have none house. Ooh. Could be worse if you don't go and pull again. No pull again. No pull again. All right, I hope that helps. We gave a lot of examples. Hopefully everyone gets a gist of the game. Uh, it's pretty fun. You come up with some silly things. Like, some pretty it smart could be things. worse. So make sure that all the stuff is silly and fun and just have fun with the game. So. Yep. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. The song that we're doing together this summer is Here I Am, Lord, 
and we learned a bit of it last week. So let's do a quick refresher. I, the Lord, this is the sign for Lord, of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars at night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? And then we go into the chorus. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. And we're on to a new verse this week. I, the Lord, so it's still this, the hand straight down, of snow. For snow, you go from your shoulders forward and then flip the snow down. So of snow and rain, I have borne, so you make your hands like you're carrying it, my people's pain. We're gonna go to our, our hearts again. I have wept, so for wept, we do one finger at a time for tears. Love, we put our hands across. This is love for them, and they turn away. So then we turn, do our hands, go turn. They turn away. I will break. So now we pretend like we're holding something and we separate it. I will break their hearts of stone. So hearts, you put your hand over your heart and tap it with your, with your longest finger. And then stone, you make like a rock and hit it. Give them hearts for love alone. So we do the sign for love again. I will speak my word to them. So you do your fingers at your mouth and forward. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? So this is like the question, who? And for send, you have your hands parallel and then whoosh them back and forth. So now we'll be doing the first verse, the chorus, and adding that second verse this week. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them Whom shall I send? 
Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. I will hold your people in my heart. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much for the story of Esther and for what we heard of it today and for the stories to come in the next two weeks. God, we thank you that even when we can't see you, even when we can't hear you, even when times are hard and we are sad or angry or scared or confused, you are there ready to welcome us with open arms and hold us close. So God, we thank you that you are a God who is there for us in the good times and who is there for us in the hard times. Hear us as we lift up our prayers day after day of the things in this world that are broken and wrong and that, that it's time for them to be taken care of for justice, for peace, and God, we pray that you would come soon to make all things new. We love you, God. And we give this day to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen, friends. We'll be back next week with a video on Wednesday. If you haven't signed up for Summer Kids Club and would like to get a packet in the mail with some fun activities and, and things to do that go with these videos, make sure you go to our church website, trinityrc.org. Click on the Connect link and the Summer Kids Club. You can sign a form there. And you will, as long as you get it done by the end of this week, get next week's uh, activities. So we'll look forward to having you join us. Uh, until then, grace and peace.